Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Due to YouTube's changing quote-unquote community standards, I created a channel called Grumpy Old Fart over on Rumble, a free speech alternative to YouTube. You can see all of my stuff over there, including my political and social commentary, as well as my current events videos. The links to my YouTube and Rumble channels, as, as well as links to let you order my books, are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a recon the role-playing game story. Call, I'm, named, I'm calling it Frenemies. Um, I, years ago I was running a game and... I, let, me, let me just get jump in here. One of, the, one of the things I always try to do when I'm running a recon game, especially in Vietnam, is to try and emulate the camaraderie of the men in the field. The men have to rely on each other and usually a bond develops between them. Sometimes that isn't the case. I was running a game back in, the, in uh, 1990, I believe it was. I had five players, Bobby, Larry, Randy, Angelo, and David. Bobby was, uh, he was playing a pig man, grenadier. Larry was a uh, point intel. Randy was a sniper medic. Angelo was a grenadier medic. And David was the it was an RTO demolitions guy. We had a, a wide range of skills, and, and every character was useful. But for whatever reason, the group broke up into cliques, and I, I cannot I, I cannot explain it. I don't know why it happened. Angelo and all the guys got along well. Okay, listen. So there was no animosity there. Angelo and David were good friends, and they sort of gravitated together. The other three did the same. These two groups argued every damn decision. I mean every decision. The group managed to survive two long-range reconnaissance patrols and one specified mission to retrieve intel from a downed helicopter. It was touch and go there a few times, but they managed to survive these three game sessions. But these guys argued every freaking point. Should we go this way? Should we go that way? Uh, let's, let's camp here. No, let's camp over there. Uh, we need to refill our canteens. You got your your uh, water purification tablets? No, I thought you brought them. I mean, just, you know, we need more ammo. No, we don't need... We, I, we're carrying too much as it is. Well, we, we need this particular piece of equipment. No, we don't. Yeah, you know, just every possible conceivable point they argued about. It was ridiculous. Then, on their fourth outing, they reconned a village and discovered a tunnel system. The VC were using... This ton these tunnels to manufacture, store, and smuggle arms. They were they had homemade. They were making homemade hand grenades. They were making uh, cheap knockoff firearms. You know that kind of thing. Had tool uh, tool shops down there, machine shops, that kind of thing. The ranking man, a staff sergeant played by Larry, ordered Angelo and David to go play tunnel rat while the rest covered the two exits. Um, you know they had because they had found two different exits to these tunnels. And David Angelo argued about it, but in the end, he, he outranked him. So he says, I'm ordering you to go. So they went. David Angelo entered the cave. They discovered that the tunnel system was much larger and more extensive than they anticipated. There were branches that went off in dozens of different directions. They immediately went back and told Larry, who decided that they'd all go into the tunnel system. I, I, I did not push this decision. I, it was not my intention to do that. <clears throat> I actually suggested that they call for more units to come in and back them up so they had more people to cover the entrances and, you know, that kind of thing. So they could get, you know, ferret out this tunnel system and get do it properly. But they didn't do that. They, and we were all going to go in. Okay. Once in, they set guards at the nearest branches while Bobby's point man explored ahead. And I have to say... Bobby was a pig man. That's crazy. Anyway, um, well, while Bobby's pig man explored ahead. Now, I have to say, Bobby was with Randy and Larry and their little clique, but he was by far the most neutral player. He got along with everybody. And he, he was, he, he only voted in, in, you know, when they had arguments, he only sided with stuff that he actually had to make a decision on. Um, he was also, Bobby's also a really good player. 
He's smart. He, he takes things into account. He's, he's a devious so-and-so. Um, I did a video a while back called uh, The Puppet Master. Go check that out. Bobby, same guy. Anyway, <clears throat> it was a painstaking process, and eventually the group ran afoul of the VC in the tunnel. While Bobby was exploring ahead, Larry was attacked by two VC with long punchy sticks. He was able to fight them off, but was badly wounded. Randy tried to assist him with medical attention, but one of the VC tossed a grenade at them, and they both died, and that section of the tunnel caved in. David and Angelo turned and ran. They said that they had no intention of sticking around for them because their characters would not do it. I love that. Whenever whenever you, you're pushing character players to role play instead of power play or instead of just go through the motions, you know, you want them to role play. Then they make the worst decisions. But well, my character would do that. Anyway. And they seem to be under the impression that Randy or Larry wouldn't try to rescue them either. And I don't know where that came from. These guys, everybody were, we were all friends. Everybody got along, you know. On the way out, Dave's character hit a tripwire and a crossbow trap fired an arrow through his eye and killed him dead. I mean, it was, it was a, you, it was like the, the, the crossbow aimed at him specifically. It was crazy. Once he was dead... Angelo was outside. He ran for the river. He ended up face to face with a dozen VC, and they machine gunned him down. He he turned a corner, you know, in in the jungle. He's following the trail. He turned a bend, and they were right there. They saw him, and they all raised their guns and opened up. It 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 was just ridiculous. He had no chance, so he died. Now, <clears throat> Bobby, being he didn't know he was the only one left because I kept him in separate rooms. Now Bobby moved slow and quiet through the tunnels until he found an underground factory where the VC were manufacturing high explosive grenades. He found a spool of cord and grabbed a crate of these grenades. On the way out, he mined the tunnels and attached cord to the pins. <coughs> when he found an exit by the river, about 100 yards from the village, he pulled the, uh, the cord and ran like hell. He was able to destroy one factory and bury two others, as well as caving in a lot of the tunnel system. And the VC were pissed. He had a three-day running firefight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Tickle in my throat. He had a, a three-day running firefight back to the landing zone. When he ran out of ammo, he used captured enemy weapons. He fought the last three hours with a knife and sharp sticks. At one point, he was throwing rocks. When the firebase had not heard from them, they radioed to have a chopper extract the group from the LZ, just to go check on them. Bobby made it into the chopper. He was badly wounded. He looked like some monster had ate him and shit him out, but he was there. He, you know, he survived. The landing zone was hot, and the door gunner earned his keep on landing and liftoff. Three VC had RPGs. They were pissed at Bobby. The pilot managed to maneuver widely to avoid them all, but... On the way out, he hit a tree and crashed and killed everyone on board. Ay, 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 ay. This was not a total party kill that I had planned, but damn it, it happened. The new characters that everyone generated were a lot more friendly towards each other. So I guess it eventually it worked out because they lived and learned. <laughs> you got to rely on them, so let's be friendly. No more frenemies. <laughs> I hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all. Clarissa Lowe, a historian from the future. Delmore Kane, a Civil War veteran turned outlaw. This oddball pairing faces a conspiracy of epic proportions spanning the centuries. If you like action and adventure westerns with a splash of science fiction and fantasy, check out my book series Drifters and their ongoing adventures.